Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to Muscle Control Part A. We're going to be going through Eugene Sandow's system of physical training. Originally, it was done with these spring grip dumbbells, but it can be done just fine with a very light pair of normal dumbbells or a stress toy. If you have one of them, you could try it with that. Or for the advanced practitioner, we're going to go with nothing at all. That's right. The better you get, the lighter we get. The inverse of how most people believe it to be. Right, so we're going to be going through 20 exercises. This is from my wall chart. This is more than 100 years old, um, but it's a damn good system. So one of the major keys to getting this right is only by the concentration of willpower on each muscle can satisfactory results be obtained. So I want you to focus entirely on the exercises at hand and on the muscle being asked to work. So we're going to start off with 25 regular bicep curls per arm. And for this, I want you to focus very much on the bicep contraction and try to relax the muscles around the biceps So try to relax the shoulder try to relax the tricep and just really focus internally with no music on no tv no podcasts no one else in the room to distract you if you can just focus internally on the feeling of the mind muscle connection in the muscle that's being asked to do the job as well as thinking about relaxing the muscles around it. So you might want to go even slower than this to begin, but we're just trying to get a healthy pump. We're not trying to burn out the muscles. Remember that 50% battery rule. We want to get healthy blood flow. We're coaxing the muscle back to health. We're nourishing it with blood flow, but we're not trying to exhaust the muscle. And this is how we're going to approach this whole module with this paradigm shift in approach to strength training. You could call it bodybuilding, yes. It is bodybuilding, we're building bodies. <laughs> but of course you might have your conventional belief of what bodybuilding is, but this is originally what it was before it, it got way out of hand, the egos took it out of hand and it became a very different system. But originally it was about an intelligent, simple way to build strength by nourishing the muscles. So after you've done 25 each arm, we're gonna to swap to this reverse grip. Remember the heart meridian runs through the arms through the bicep as as does the lung meridian so when we're working this when we're getting this healthy pump and we're not exhausting we're working those meridians which benefit the internal representative organs as well so in this you'll feel the squeeze works slightly different on the bicep it might take you a few sessions to really start to find where the pump is with this but it's a much more of kind of a forearm bicep connection when you do it this way around and i in the beginning i was like why do they do both why not just stick with the normal grip bicep curl but I can now feel that this is a different purpose and I get why they do this so 25 reverse bicep curls each arm getting a good squeeze at the top of each time breathing relaxed you can see heels almost touching feet spread apart thighs relaxed focus contraction at the top of each rep and then trying to relax with the arm as you release it All right next up we've got these crucifix curls we're just going to do 10 per arm so i guess you can count 20 reps total so what you want you to focus on here is the back muscle doing the job the back of the shoulder the back of the deltoid this isn't a bicep workout first and foremost it might be bicep a little bit secondary or thirdary but primarily this is for the back of the shoulder the back of the deltoids it's doing the work so i'll show you this angle here you can see so we're focused on the pull we're focused on the mechanical action of the shoulder that's pulling we're not just copying what i'm doing here we're not just mimicking it we're thinking about that the back of the shoulder engaging and then drawing that hand towards the shoulder with that muscle as the focus then we're going to go on to 10 crucifix curls so simultaneous this time, same thing. And I like to look up at the top of the rep and then bring the chin down as I pull in. And once again, it's the back of the shoulder that's getting worked here, not the biceps. After you've done 10 of them, Feel free to shake it out, take 10, 30 seconds in between if you want. And we're moving on to these flies and reverse flies. So for this, I want you to focus on the middle of the back muscle as you open out. And then as you push forward, focus on the chest doing the work. So we're focusing on 
opposing muscles to do the job for each side of the rep. So you can see chest to come forward, middle of the back to go back. And I'll show you from the back in a minute so you can see the back's nice and wide and then the middle of the back leads the, the motion. So I've done 10 of them. Shake it out once again. Now we're doing pull downs. So for this I want you to focus again on the back of the shoulder and the lat doing the job. You can do this in reverse and you can do shoulder press for this so you can work the other way around but for me I enjoy and it feels better for me to focus on the downwards action here and using the lat and the back of the shoulder to make this happen. Again just working, the reps are there just to get the pump on so you know you've got 10 reps just throughout the 10 work up slowly each rep gets slightly more of a contraction and just build up so you get nice nourishing blood flow to those muscles of the back and the lats. Then after that, we've got these trap raises. Again, we're using kind of the middle of the back around the shoulder blades, the muscles around the shoulder blades, rhomboids, supporting the scapula to pull this up. So I'm not really, there's not much shoulder really involved. I'm not just mimicking the action. And we're going up to get the dumbbell just about level with the eyebrows or the forehead. You can do this completely fine. Again, the whole workout can be done with no dumbbells and you can just focus on what muscles in the core of the body are making this happen. And you feel with this, you can pull down with the, the middle, middle of the back and get it to lift. Now we're doing these lat twists, so you can see how the, the lats are popping out. So I'm using the lats to rotate the shoulders because they're internal shoulder rotators as well. 10 of them, and then we're doing 10 of these wrist twists, holding the dumbbell at the end, just rotating out. And then we're going to swap and do 10 the other way just to get the wrists involved as well so this is all in alignment with the way sandow did it there are other things you could add to it there's other ways but i just enjoy doing it as he prescribed it right now i'm getting good results and i think we'll start with this and then we can build so next up we've got these strikes so it's as though you're throwing a punch but once again we're focused on the core the kind of lat this the around the muscle around the scapula driving the motion we're not just mimicking a punch we're activating the back to drive the arm so the motion's coming from the core so we do left and you take this step out as you do it boom so you see i'm not just swinging the arm there's a, a definite drive coming from just behind my shoulder and then i like to reverse this so 10 pulls this time so like you're doing a, a lap pull in the machine, but we can just do it with a dumbbell. And as long as the muscles work and we're getting the contraction, it feels good, it works fine. And you can see how we're going out into that coiling core, really using the bottom of the lat at the end. And then I like to kind of explore the whole 180 degrees of that shoulder a little bit. So we start with the elbow down to the pocket, like this. Reach really far forward and then start that contraction from the mid back again, boom, into the lat down into the pocket training the right muscles to do the right job and not just as I keep saying mimicking we're not button bashing the body here we're specific right next up three press ups that's all we need if you do them right you can see again the back starts the motion I activate the back and then I drive up swapping to eight leg raises this is per leg so you might want to use the dumbbells in the hand as counterweights and for this one I want you to focus on the stomach pulling the leg up so the stomach muscle you might have to sink your breathing the stomach muscles what activates and that's what pulls the leg up so we're not just copying me swinging legs the stomach's what drives the legs so eight each side you don't need to worry about straight legs so much then we're going into these slow controlled like spinal sit-ups a dumbbell in your hand will help if it's not possible feel free to hook your feet under something if that's what you need um, but for as much as I can I like to do these slow so without momentum and use it squeezing the stomach at the top so reach back overhead hands in and then slowly curl up and if it gets to a point where you need to use momentum I think I do towards the end 
Sometimes I need to start to do a little hop off my back to pull up and again squeeze the stomach at the front to pull your stomach over your thighs. Ten reps of this. You don't need to do 50 sit-ups a day. You don't need to bang things out. It's just getting a nice blood flow to the stomach without exhausting it. But it is still taxing at the same time. <laughs> there we go. Go on, Tim. Nice and controlled. You prescribe your own momentum as and when you need it. Right, next up we've got four leg raises. Only four, that's all you need. Your core will be nicely nourished after this. Again, using the stomach muscles to lift. If four is too many, you can just do two. Again, we're just we're not trying to exhaust, so do the amount that's right for you. Right after that, back to standing. We're going to do squats. Ten squats, heels lifted, and for the first set of squats, we're focused on the thighs doing the lifting. So you're going to contract the quad muscles to lift you up. And I kind of like to explore around the outer quad muscles and then come towards the inside quad muscles. So you can see my knees are coming slightly closer. So I like to mix this up. Show you from the side, heels lifted, squeezing the thighs. I don't worry so much on the way down, but on the way up, it's the thighs, the quads that are doing the action in lifting. Then we're gonna do eight heels down squats. And for this one, you're gonna focus on the glute is gonna be what lifts you up. So squeezing the butt at the top. At the bottom, you start to contract it. And that's what starts to lift you. And then at the top, you give it a good squeeze. So again, we're getting good blood flow and nourishment to our butts. So we've done the thighs, now we do the glutes. Show you from the side, so you get a good squeeze. Drive the hips forwards. Right, then to finish off, final exercise. Side bends, 10 each side. Slowly build into this, don't just rush with a deep contraction on the first rep, so easing into it, pulling on your lat to pull the arm down towards the knee. And with this you can explore, so you can go more to the front and get the obliques to, pull, to be the pulling action. And then you can, like this, and then you can go around to the back. So it's more of the, the back and the lower lat that pulls you, more of a coiling core type action, like that. And that feels good too. 20 reps total, and you're done. Short, simple, not overexerting, healthy, nourishing blood flow, give it a go. It only takes you about 15 minutes at the most. I'm going to ask you to do this six days a week because we need to be consistent if you want to see results with this type of program. And stay tuned for next week's edition to the program because there's a couple of exercises that I do think this misses that we're going to add in then. Cheers.